Thank you, Richard. Uh, it seems like the problem with collective bargaining isn't really a, a problem of reality, but it sounds more like a problem of public relations. You're saying how this is something that hits the public against um, the worker. Well, it just seems like there should be more open lines of communication, and we shouldn't just throw away everything um, just because of the fact that people got bad press. Uh, how many people here always believe the media? See a hand, one hand. All right, thank you. So, uh, Richard, you also mentioned the idea of, of pensions, and I think this is a really good issue to talk about because this was in a situation where both the taxpayer and the public sector worker who is, in, is invested in the, pen, the public pension system are both um, being negatively affected. Um, from the onset, public sector workers, as I stated in my opening speech, uh, choose to make a little bit less because they feel the need to serve the public. And part of what we get no. also for the fact that we're making a little bit less is deferred no. compensation, which is all that a pension is. It, it's, well, let's go back to the whole idea of public relations. The public relations battle has, has said that this is like a freebie that public workers have been getting, when in actuality, at the onset of your career, you're told that you're made a little bit less because at the end of the career, you'll have a little bit more stability. Um, the government entity that employs the employee um, is on the hook to fund, to fund this at the end, that is correct. And during times of the financial boom, scheduled payments were actually not made in a lot of municipalities and states, and that's very true in Chicago. And now that all of a sudden that the economy is in a downswing, we are being blamed for the need for, to have these uh, pensions funded in the future. And when I say underfunded, I mean that word as a verb and not an adjective. Adjective. And although there are a handful of anecdotes that throw otherwise, an Illinois teacher, firefighter, or librarian retires with an average pension of about $32,000 a year. And you mentioned also that um, the collective bargaining institutionalized conflict. Well, the conflict is going to exist one way or the other. Either it's going to be single employees uh, fighting with their bosses, and anyone here who's ever been involved in either a union organizing drive, or even anyone who's just had a job, office politics plays such a role in creating a negative work environment. And when you have everyone negotiating with the boss on their own, you're going to have people snitching on each other, and you're going to have people throwing each other on the bus. You're going to have people not doing a lot of work, but maybe um, finding ways to kiss up. And that just would be a, have a negative effect on, on the work environment. Now, if the workers can come together, agree to representation, and then have someone at the table uh, debating with, or uh, with, to, with uh, bargaining with um, the government entity on the other side of the table, the two have the opportunity to discuss economic realities. And they look at each other's budgets, and they decide what is most feasible. So I would argue that it actually um, downplay some of that conflict. And you also brought up collective bargaining being the catalyst for uh, the, the issues in, in Wisconsin with uh, the Governor Walker taking away collective bargaining and people protesting to get it back. Well, if he had bargained in good faith, if he had will, was willing to take the concessions, or willing to um, give the concessions that the workers themselves said they were willing to take, this conflict would have been resolved. But the problem was, it wasn't two people on either side of the table working these things out. People were doing it behind closed doors and just waiting for things to, to hit the fan. Um, Thirty seconds. Well, I just want to uh, close with saying that collective bargaining is not only is it compatible with the public sector, but is mandatory because it allows public what about sector the federal workers government? the ability to advocate for their clients as well as for themselves, and that is very, very much a part of our American democracy. Thank you. We don't have a democracy. <clears throat> Thanks, Kenzo. You opened up your uh, remarks today with a quotation from Martin Luther King Jr., and uh, I'm not going to have it exactly right, but I'm going to paraphrase it, um, that he warned against different uh, laws set by the state favoring certain people. That's exactly what we have with collective bargaining in the public sector right now. Yes. Um, I'll refer to a couple other comments that you made. Uh, you said 
that public servants deserve to be paid more so they can do a good job because they're involved in public service. Uh, well, and they deserve to be paid well if they do a good job, absolutely, and most of them do. That's absolutely right. So in Illinois, comp he, he said that people in the public service deserve to be paid well. That's what he said, and I agree with him. In Illinois, compensation per state government employee averaged about $70,000, which is 23% more than the private sector worker averaging about $56,000. That is uh, late data coming from 2010. Um, of course, there's an imbalance between uh, public, between employees and employers all the time. It's the employer who gives the job to the employee. There's a natural imbalance. But it's important to address problems once they've actually occurred, not to seek them out. And unfortunately, that's what public sector collective bargaining does. Uh, <clears throat> there's a comment that, Kenzo, you made that scheduled payments weren't made to pension funds in the states, which is true, but that is directly the fall of the politicians that your unions elected. Uh, for compensation yes. is very, yes. very yes. easy for politicians to do because they don't have to pay for it today and they don't have to have the results and the consequences of that today as well. And, and to say blanketly, which is always going to be a problem in debates like this, I'm sure I've made some generalized statements as well, uh, not many, uh, mind you, but <laughs> public employees are absolutely driven by the by the profit motive. Absolutely. Why else would they want money? Everyone profits. If you're an employee, you want to profit from the labor that you have. Absolutely. Everyone is driven by the profit motive. To assume otherwise is just disingenuous or silly. The, the problem is that public sector unions assume conflict. They, they assume that there is always going to be some uh, manager masquerading around trying to exact or, or find, rather, uh, concessions that the workers can make in order to boost their bottom line. And the, and the point of a business is actually to make a profit. It's true. But when you make a profit, the profit is a signal that you're serving well people who you don't know. And unfortunately, the fundamental difference between private sector unions and public sector unions in the practice of collective bargaining is that there is no choice for the people who are paying the money to have any input into this conversation. It is not done in public. It is not transparent. It is absolutely done behind closed doors, and that is something antithetical to what I believe most of you are here today to talk about. Thank you very much. Yeah.